20% of all strokes are due to carotid stenosis, and therefore, uh, the subject of this talk is extremely important when it comes to stroke treatment and prevention. Uh, there have been a number of uh, level one evidence, multi-center randomized control clinical trials that have studied carotid and arterectomy for symptomatic uh, carotid stenosis. The largest of these uh, have been NASIT, the European Carotid Surgery Trial, and the Veteran Affairs Trial. For the purpose of uh, this talk, we'll be focusing on uh, NASIT. And um, it's hard to believe that it's uh, been almost 30 years uh, since NASIT was uh, first published in the New England Journal of Medicine back in uh, 1991. Uh, as many of you know, NASIT uh, was a randomized multicenter clinical trial of 659 patients with 70% or greater symptomatic carotid stenosis. There were 50 sites in North America, in the United States, and Canada, and patients were randomized to Optical med optimal medical care versus carotid and arterectomy. And what the trial found was that in life, ta life table estimates of cumulative risk of its lateral stroke at two years, there was a significant benefit, a reduction in stroke uh, with carotid and arterectomy. At two years, the risk of stroke uh, ipsilateral to the carotid stenosis in the medical arm was 26%. In the carotid and arterectomy arm, it was 9%. Uh, at the same time, the perioperative stroke and death rate in the carotid and arterectomy arm was 5.8%. Those uh, are the data that most people are aware of uh, for patients with symptomatic 70% or greater carotid stenosis, but they actually uh, analyzed uh, patients that had moderate uh, stenosis, uh, patients that had 50 to 69% symptomatic carotid stenosis. And so there were 858 patients in NASIT across 106 centers with 50 to 69% symptomatic carotid stenosis, which were randomized to optimal medical care versus carotid and arterectomy. And the cumulative risk of ipsilateral stroke at five years was significantly reduced with carotid and arterectomy. In the medical arm, uh, the risk of stroke at five years was 22.2%. In the surgical arm, it was 15.7%. And in the need-to-treat analysis, uh, they concluded that to prevent one ipsilateral stroke during the five-year period, uh, one would need to perform 15 uh, carotid and arterectomies. And again, uh, the perioperative stroke and death rate in the surgical arm was 6.7%. Uh, now, when you Go back and look at the data from NASA. There are some uh, interesting findings. Uh, for one, there seemed to be a gender effect. And so carotid and arterectomy in NASA seemed to be more beneficial in men uh, than in women. In men, in the need to treat analysis to prevent one ipsilateral stroke during the five year period, uh, one would need to perform 12 uh, carotid and arterectomies or 16 to prevent a disabling stroke. But in women, uh, to prevent one ipsilateral stroke during the five-year period, one would need to perform 67 carotid and arterectomies, or 125 to prevent a disabling stroke. So at least in the moderate stenosis uh, cohort in NASA, there seemed to be a gender effect where end arterectomy was more beneficial in men uh, than in women. What was the reason for this? It was probably due to the lower risk of stroke in this trial in women. In men, the risk of stroke over a five-year period was 25%, and carotid and arterectomy reduced this to 17%. In women, however, the risk of stroke over five years was only 15%, and carotid and arterectomy reduced this to only 